All right, hello everybody. Let me get started this week. Um, had a different presentation to go through. Um, I'll flip back and forth through a couple things. <clears throat> Going to go over this week. Um, still working on mower operations. Um, last week we went over the safety stuff. This week I said we were kind of go over a little bit of the operations. That being said, um, going to kind of go over a couple different things as well. Um, you know, we talked about striping a little bit, talked about mowing uh, around landscape beds so we're not throwing grass into the landscape beds and the mulch, and pine needles and things like that. Um, we talked about propane, uh, propane versus the gas. <clears throat> so in Moodle this week, I put in a couple uh, a couple things um, on the propane. Number one is a um, little spreadsheet that kind of lets you calculate the costs. Uh, it's kind of an individual decision if that's something that you guys want to do, um, are interested in in your landscape business, or you bring it to your boss, whatever the case may be. Um, but I have a little flyer in there, a little spreadsheet that kind of goes through those calculations, uh, can show the savings. Uh, there was a little study done, little PDF file, a little article um, that I found that shows, you know, another landscape company that converted about 15 lawn mowers to propane. Read that on your own. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up here in the lecture, but, you know, <clears throat> I'm not going to read that during the lecture. But he saved some money, um, something that he did switch to. He also got some assistance as well. Um, so, you know, that made it a little bit easier for the cost of, of changing his existing mowers out. So things like that, we're going to talk about that. The striping, a little bit about the propane, got a couple videos, um, trying to mix it up a little bit, not for me to sit there and keep going um, over and over. So got a couple of videos. I'll do a little voiceover as we watch some of those videos. And then again, at the end of this presentation, kind of have that motivational um, video as well. If we have time, we'll watch that um, through the lecture. If not, then we can, you know, you guys can click on that lip later on when you guys have time. Uh, another thing that I'll bring up towards the end of this is our, our um, final tests. I put the metric, the rubric, if you will, in Moodle as well. So I'll bring that up and I'll kind of show you those um, a little bit as well towards the end. I'll do that. Try to do that before um, <clears throat> before we get into the final motivation speaking uh, video. So a little back and forth, sharing screen, a uh, little different drive in here. So bear with me as I click through some stuff. So this is our, this is kind of our first one here, right? This is our gas versus propane calculation worksheet. This is in Moodle as well. So you guys can download this <clears throat> and, and work through it. Um, see if it's something that you're interested in. You know, like we talked about in class last week, it can be a fuel saving and it also can be a sales pitch as well. The article that I have posted as well mentioned both of those. So it's, uh, that's kind of the driving forces behind the, the, the propane. Um, it can be um, just, as, just as good, just as efficient as far as the mower performance as gas, whereas, you know, that's been a stigma, if you will, from not just propane, but the batteries, right? <clears throat> we talked about batteries when we did the chainsaws. So, you know, the batteries have come a long way as far as the power that they, su um, that they supply for the, for the machines. So you're not lacking that, that, that power and that performance, right? So same thing with the propane on the gas mowers or on the mowers, uh, you know, you still have the same power, you still have the same performance you know, it's, it's come a long way. So I think it's a, a personal thing. Um, 
business specific, if it's something that you want to go towards, but here's a something to help you guys out, something to get you a little information um, to try to figure out if it's um, for you, the, the cost endeavor that's involved with it as well. So take a look at these, you know, sketch some numbers down, kind of figure it out, kind of see if it's something that you want to go to. And kind of like I mentioned before, <clears throat> you also have the, um, the sales aspect too, right? The sales aspect of going green, better for the environment, all those types of things. You know, is that a sales pitch that you're looking to um, capture uh, for your business as well? So the case study, bring this one over. Case study that goes through a little bit about the company here, Master Trimmers, 10 year old lawn care business up in Missouri. Um, you know, he converted some of his commercial mowers to propane. Okay. He had about 15 of them, I think. Um, you know, he had a cost savings of about $10,000 in fuel a year. So that kind of goes back to the spreadsheet, you know, something that kind of helps you figure that out uh, prior to that way you can get an idea of the, that, that potential savings as well. Um, but, you know, read through this. It's interesting. This is just one example. Um, you know, I'm sure if you search the internet, you could probably find people that didn't, uh, reasons why not to switch to propane. Um, but in this, this gentleman's case, this company's case, um, you know, they had over $10,000 in savings, uh, something that they also mentioned down in the article. Um, you know, it, it, it was also something that they were able to um, have as a benefit for sales. People, people thought that that was interesting, um, help them sell different jobs that they may have not gotten in the past as well. So, you know, different aspects, but good little short article, so it doesn't take too long to read. Um, so take a look at it just to kind of give you an idea um, of, of what it is, but that's kind of, uh, that's in your Moodle as well. So take a look at, take a look at it um, read through it. It's a, it's a good, um, it's a good, a good reference along with that, along with that spreadsheet as well. So we talked about mowing patterns. <clears throat> I found a, and alternate directions for start this over. Sorry. Um, you know, something here from Toro. Um, we'll kind of go through your lawnmower is what does that, right? Your lawnmower is how is how that how the stripes come up. Um, and if you you can see on the screen here, you know, there's different different mowing. There, there's all kinds of different techniques to get those those patterns and those stripes in, right? You know. If you're looking at uh, golf course and sports fields, you know, those mowers um, are different than what your deck mower is in the landscape business, right? So, you know, they have rollers as well. Um, and that roller kind of helps lay that grass down and create that stripe itself. <clears throat> you can lay grass, you can lay sod. So it stripes in a certain way as well. You know, when you, when you buy sod and it comes on a pallet, it's rolled up. That grass is already folded in a direction. Um, you know, it's already laying in a direction. If you pay attention to way that, the way that that grass is laying, that can help you create um, those stripes as well. So I thought that it was something that you guys were interested in. So I kind of put this in here. Um, this is kind of a homeowner grade uh, little walkthrough but neat, neat as it is to, to kind of see um, in, the, in this video, they're trying to sell kind of a roller attachment behind your, uh, 
behind your little push mower that you would have at your house. Uh, keep in mind that's that's what's that's what's laying that grass down. That's what's creating that stripe, right? <clears throat> so not as much as that aspect of what we're trying to look at, um, but more of just the you know how do you how do you get Since that stripe? The Toro Company has been helping customers beautify and preserve outdoor environments, golf courses, sports fields, and commercial properties to yards like yards. Now you can easily create vivid, eye-catching stripes and patterns on your lawn with the new Toro Lawn Striping System. This new easy-to-use system quickly and easily attaches to your walk-behind mower, allowing you to create those great striping patterns typically found on golf course. So I don't really care about the actual attachment as much as what they get into or just about the striping in general. Okay. Um, so not, not overly worried about this little attachment. So if you guys are interested in that, you can kind of pay more attention to it. But all it is is a roller that's attached to the back of it. Just helps lay the grass down. We'll skip through some of that. Don't cut your grass too short. Never cut off more than the top one third during any one mow, no matter how tall the grass may be. Now decide what type of pattern you'd like to create. Keep in mind what you or your neighbors will do the pattern law. We call this the line of sight. Patterns that are parallel to your line of sight will create more dramatic results than patterns that are perpendicular. Let's start with a simple straight line. So keep that in mind too, right? So <clears throat> where are you viewing that pattern from? Um, if you watch golf on TV, you watch baseball on TV, football is not really that way. Soccer is that way. Soccer, soccer patterns will be, would be different. You know, there's a, there's a view from the aerial view, right? Um, you know, what does it look like on TV? Um, coming from golf course experience, I know that we, we kept that in mind when we did things. Um, so when we had tournaments that, that were going to be on TV, um, you know, they did certain things in order to have that, have that visual appearance from the blimp, so to speak. So, you know, keep that in mind, right? Where you're, where you're viewing this from will help depict kind of what kind of pattern you might like. Strike pattern across the entire lawn. <clears throat> First, cut one or two swaths around the perimeter of the lawn. It's up to you whether or not you have the striper on for this. Now, find a starting point and mow your first strike. It's a good idea to find an object in the distance in front of you to use as a visual marker to mow to it. This technique will help you achieve a straighter line. Now, simply change directions, aligning your edge with the first cut, and continue the alternating pattern until it's complete. You're well on your way to creating that ballpark look in your own lawn. Wasn't that easy? So if you start, this is pretty neat, right? So, I mean, that looks good. See how they've gone around the tree ring, right? So that's what we talked about before. So when you come up to that tree ring, you're going to go around it. So you're throwing grass away from it and see how, you know, you can see at least two, uh, two passes around the tree ring that they've done um, to clear any debris getting on that tree ring, um, on, that, on that mulch, on that, on, that, on that landscape bed there, right? So, you know, you <clears throat> two passes around will make it look good. It's they got a nice little pattern around it. So it's kind of neat how that is. Um, you know, one of those, one of the things that they talked about is starting in the middle of where you're, where you're going, right? So if you were going to start this, let's just say this is the road down here at the bottom. Um, and if you're going to go towards the house, you know, you may pick this line right in front of this tree and you just keep your eye on that tree and you walk straight towards that tree. Try to keep that as straight as you can. That's going to give you a straight, that's going to start your straight line. Okay, if you start <clears throat> along the sidewalk or the driveway, or you start over here on the neighbor's yard, that may not be a straight line, right? So if, even though you think that that's a straight line, it may not be a straight line onto the grass of where you're going to see it. So when you get further, if you, let's just say we start at the driveway and we work our way over, you know, these lines over here could start to be on an angle now 
where it's in, in line with the driveway, but not really in line with the um, with the house, with the yard itself, right? So keep that in mind when you are striping, it can get it can get pretty tricky, and it um, you know it's not as easy as it looks to make a straight line, especially when you're um, especially when you're hitting bumps and whatnot, you know, on a rider or walking. something more vibrant, subtle, consistent turns throughout the design will create a smooth, beautiful wave pattern. You can align wave patterns with driveways, landscapes, hills, or just create visual contours in large open areas. Now that you've mastered the basic patterns, you're ready to move up to circles. Circles, or bullseyes, make a great pattern on their own. Or you can use them to highlight trees, landscapes, or flagpoles. Rather than the perimeter, start your circle on the inside and alternate directions for each ring you add to your circle path. Make sure you finish the circle and turn out away from the center to avoid any uneven areas. Ready for a more complex pattern? Try creating your own checker or chessboard. Find your pattern so that both sets of stripes are positioned diagonally with your intended line of sight. This will provide the greatest visual impact. First, cut the perimeter. Next, cut the first set of stripes, again alternating back and forth. Now, crisscross over the first pattern rows. The angle of the second set of rows is up to you. You can make it perpendicular or perfect squares, or change up the angle to create dynamic. So when you see these a lot too, you would see these on baseball fields, um, soccer fields, golf course greens, those types of things. Um, <clears throat> baseball fields, soccer fields, some of those athletic turf applications, you know, they'll create these things for that visual effect, um, you know, for that wow factor, whatever the case is, right? Golf course greens <clears throat> and golf courses, they do it on a mowing pattern as well, right? So golf course does it to create that effect as well, but they do it on a mowing, right? So some days you mow from, and, you, and if you think of a clock from, you know, 12 o'clock, one, two, three, four, five, six, right? So you change up your mowing patterns, right? So one day you go out and mowing pattern is from 12 to six, it means it's straight up and down. The next pattern may be 10 to two, right? So you're mowing on an angle. Another day, maybe nine to three, you're mowing side to side. And the other one may be, um, what is it? It's not 10 to, it's not 10 to two, it's two to one, two, two to eight, and it's 10 to, 10 to four, right? So you're mowing at different, different angles, but that's what you set up. That's the rotation, right? So you set that up, you rotate the way you cut the grass. So you're not always cutting in the same direction. Um, because you get the blade to stand up properly and you get a better cut, you get a more even playing surface. So on a golf course green, you cut it in different angles. So the grass stands up at different directions throughout the week, throughout the day, and you and it gets a better playing surface, right? Um, not as important in a soccer and baseball field to get the playing surface as even when the ball is bouncing, right? On a golf course green, it's a different, different level um, so you do that and it creates a checkerboard as well. So just keep that in mind. Um, some landscape companies do that as well. <clears throat> they go out, you know, one day is, um, one day you're mowing one direction, the next day you're mowing another direction and it kind of helps create those, those checkerboard patterns as well. But you can do this, um, you can do this cutting it multiple times and creating that in the same, in the same cut, same day. Again, keep in mind the pure line of sight to create the desired visual effect. Make a mistake? No problem. Just go over the area again to make quick and easy adjustments to your patterns. Now that you know the basics, you can create patterns limited only by your imagination. Mowing your lawn will never be the same again. Turn your lawn into the talk of the town with the new Toro. All right, so something's kind of neat. Um, 
you know, different different patterns that you can do. But Toro obviously is that little that little roller on the back of the of the walk behind. Um, your mowers do it as well by by laying the grass down, right? Some mowers do it better than others. <clears throat> Real mowers that are used on golf courses and uh, sports turfs, you know, they have rollers on them. So, you know, that, that helps lay that grass down as well. So, you know, just different, something different. Like I say, I know we talked about it. I know it was some questions. Um, you know, I think it's, it, it's neat and nice when you, when you have those different patterns and you look out and you're like, man, that looks good. Um, not a lot of weeds sticking up. So, you know, it's, it's a selling point. It's a, it's a prideful thing, you know, when you have your crew members and your managers and, and things along that that are um, that, that take pride in making that look good. You know, those those mowing patterns and those stripes kind of help do that. All right, so another video. Um, the the next two videos are through um, Husqvarna. Uh, kind of just goes through some of the walk the walk behind and the zero turn. These are Husqvarna model specific. Um, <clears throat> we do we do have the Husqvarna's at, at, at school, so it's not too far off base, but it just kind of goes through the, the, the PPE, um, some of the base, uh, let's say universal basic controls that are on a lot of the walk behinds and the zero turns. So I think they're a little good. Like I say, trying to mix it up a little bit, trying to show a couple of different things um for, for for you guys trying to get those uh trying to get the viewership up you know because the viewership from you guys watching me has not been too phenomenal so maybe incorporating some of these things will help help uh get the viewership up show a little more um interest in what we're trying to do here during the lectures so you know, I'm going to flip through some of this. We're not going to watch all 18 minutes of it by any means. Um, and then, um, you know, we'll go on to the next one as well. professional walk behind mowers. Over the next 20 minutes or so, we'll introduce you to this powerful line of mowers and teach you how to use them properly and safely. Walk behind mowers are designed for use on large open grass plots. They are also generally and you see how he's going around that tree ring, you know, his shoot, kick it to the right. So this is specific to this model, but these are on every one, right? They all have those components on, on this walk behind, right? So just because we're looking at this one doesn't mean that they're all the same, right? Or you'll be completely lost from a Toro to a Husqvarna to a Great Dane, whatever the case is, right? They're, they all have that. They all have the PTOs. They all have the throttle. Um, they all adjust the certain speed mechanism, all those types of things. So, you know, when you learn when you learn one, you should be able to go to the next one as well, right? You'll have to figure out the differences of them, but at the end of the day, um, these same components are going to be similar. Same, it doesn't matter the brand, okay? Service meter, 
blade switch, which engages the mower blades. Engine switch. Hydraulic oil reservoir. Fuel tank. Fuel tank cap. Parking brake. Engine oil dipstick. Brake. Hydraulic pump bypass valves, which allow the mower to move when the engine isn't running. Okay, so that's kind of something too that you you pay attention with when you're using hydraulic stuff. Um, you know, it's the same same aspect on some of the larger equipment, right? So if the larger equipment gets stuck or you need to tow it or whatever the case is, right? Um, you know, some of that larger equipment, like a tractor, you can put in neutral and you can tow it out, right? Skid steer, you can't really put in neutral if you need to tow it out, okay? So the hydraulics on the skid steer, there would be a relief, um, hydraulic relief valve as well. On the mowers, it's the same thing. Mower, mower cuts off on you, um, battery's dead, whatever the case is, right? You can't get that mower started and you need to get it up on the truck, you know, to take it back to the shop. You know, you, you have to figure that out. If the, if the hydraulics are locked, if it just stops, you won't be able to move it, right? There is no, there is no neutral on a lot of the machines. Some of them there is, some of the old models there is, but a lot of the newer stuff, there is no neutral. So you would have to relieve that uh, hydraulic pressure in order to keep, to, to allow those wheels to spin freely so you can move it up onto the, um, move it onto the truck. And if, you, if you're fighting, if you're fighting that, that pressure, you can do more damage to the hydraulics um, moving it like that. I want to skip through the PPE to get through it, but we've talked a lot about that. Um, so I don't want to talk that. We've talked about fueling as well. We talked about that during chainsaws, right? So those are very similar controls to any, any walk behind that you would that you would have, right? You're, you're 
moving it forward, moving it backwards, side to side, one's loose, one's tight, all those types of things. So this is obviously Husqvarna, um, but the, the, they're very similar controls. It doesn't matter what, um, what which brand that you're using. So when you do zero turns, that's what we talk about uh, the, the mowers itself, right? When we when we say zero turn mower, you know, you know that most people are thinking that it's a ride on mower. It can turn, do its thing, but right? I mean, the zero turn is is it can make a 360 degree circle without moving the one one wheel, one ever pivot wheel that you that you're doing. Uh, keep in mind when you do that, you know that pivot wheel is stationary. It's rubber and it's on turf. So when you turn it, it's going to it's going to turn and pull and twist out whatever grass it is. So every time that you turn like that, you are going to leave a little bald spot of turf. Okay. So when you when you are mowing and you're going down and you're making this perfect line and you spin it right around every little every little one every little turn that you spin on a dime so to speak is going to dig up a little bit of grass so when you have a very nice piece of turf somebody's yard whatever the case is you can you can do a nice cut and then you can go back and look if you really turned hard on that thing, a new operator, you know, you'll see all these little holes where they've turned right next to the lines that they've created. Something to think of, you know, as you become a better operator of these and you get more practice, <clears throat> you know, try not to make that little, that little turn right there so it digs up that grass because, you know, now you got a bare spot um, where you turn. That's why it's ideal to not mow in the same direction every time. You mow in the same direction every time, it does two things. It's going to create a rut because you, if you're gonna pass over the same spot in the grass, in, on, in the dirt, it, every time you mow, right? So it's gonna create a rut. Um, and then your, your wheels are gonna go over that same turf. So you're gonna be damaging that same turf over and over and over again. So you're going to make a, not only are you going to make a rut, you know, it's going to become bare as well. So if you look on the side of a hill, in some places, you see that a lot. You see the lines, you see the lines of the mowing, but you also see the tire marks. That's because they go the same direction every time they mow it. Now, that being said, there are some pieces of turf that you will run across that that's the only way you can mow it. <clears throat> but at the end of the day too, you know, maybe, Maybe every other time you, you may have to weed eat it too, right? Try to weed eating it is not the best form of cutting cutting grass, but at the end of the day too, you're trying to get a good stand of turf and not tear it out. So, you know, you have to manage that aspect. But keep in mind when you do these zero turns, um, that one rubber wheel, that rubber tire is turning onto that turf digging into the ground. I mean, it is, it is ripping out the turf. Our operator prepares to begin mowing. We started the engine as outlined earlier. At the moment, 
parking brake is still engaged. When the operator moves the throttle control to full throttle and then engages the opening seat. Now he releases the parking brake and engages the roller deck, then pulling the blade switch up. Finally, he grasps the speed control bar and steering controls to begin mowing. Again, if you're mowing in reverse, use the smaller safety bar at the rear of the console. Generally speaking, the grass is long. You may want to cut it twice, once at a higher setting and then again at a lower setting, until you reach the desired height. The best mowing tends to come from using a high blade speed. You can move fairly quickly, but pay attention to how effective your cut is. The grass is very thick. You may have to adjust your speed and go a bit slower than you would in normal conditions. When mowing in a large area, start by turning to the right. This way, grass clippings won't blow on the roads, sidewalks, or flower beds. After two or three rounds, you can switch to the opposite direction. All right, so we've talked about that. Um, you know, he's going into an area here where you're pretty much going to have to blow grass somewhere. You know, he's either going to have to blow it this way one time or he's going to have to blow it that way sometime. It's not always avoidable, but it's a whole lot easier to blow grass out of one tree ring than it is to blow grass out of every tree ring because you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Um, you know, it, it, it's it, that, that type of mentality. But this is, you know, good companies compared to companies that aren't paying attention, good operators compared to operators that aren't paying attention um, when you're mowing. Mower's wheels may sink into the soft grass, which can cause clumps that may stick to the underside of the mower. Again, it's important to do a site check inspection before you mow for traction, and you can slide. If you lose traction, disengage the blades and continue slowly down the slope in a straight line. The stopping is absolutely necessary. Put the steering controls into a neutral position, push them forward very gently to begin moving again. Finally, don't mow your drop off. So this is this is an area here, and I'm just kind of flipping through these. These videos are obviously in this in this lecture. You can look them you can look them up and watch them fully. Um, you know, just trying to incorporate this this video, um, and then talk talk about different points as well. So this is a this is one of those hills, right? So you know, number one, you got a fence down at the bottom of a of a large wall that's keeping you from going over that wall. You know, so you know, this is a walk behind job, right? This is what a walk behind is designed for, to mow, to mow slopes like this. You know, and, and, and what's the tendency to be, gonna be? The tendency is gonna be to mow it the same direction along the side of the hill every time, right? So when you do that, you know, that's where you're gonna create those tire marks, it's gonna create a rut, all those types of things. You know, just like I said, when you're mowing with wet grass, sometimes you're gonna have to mow when it's somewhat wet and moist <clears throat> and then that's going to help you that's going to help create you know those problems um you know that's just the nature of the business but you know it's a whole lot easier to mow this hill along the side than it is to go up and down that hill too right so if you're that guy that's running that mower up and down that hill you know that's that's a, that's a workout so going side to side is a whole lot easier physically those are just things that you have to have to pay attention to um, when you do that. But you know, this is a, a decent looking lawn, right? Um, looks like a really nice building in the background. So this looks like a nice contract, a nice customer. Um, you know, you would hate to, you know, create that hill and that slope where it has ruts on it. You know, the, the grass is. You know, your tire marks have been created, all those types of things. You don't want to, you know, create a problem when, you, you know, for this customer. Um, so those are the things that you need to learn how to, to manage, come up with different thoughts, right? So maybe, maybe, maybe we suck it up as a company <clears throat> and every month we have to mow this thing up and down instead of side to side. So, you know, we don't create those ruts. Uh, maybe we skip it very all the time when it's raining, right? So it's, it's that key to that management aspect of being on top of top of what your crew is going to do. Those are the things that you know we want to talk about and, and, and kind of be aware of. If you're uncomfortable mowing our slope, ask your supervisor for direction. 
using a Husqvarna W500 is the same as using any walk-behind mower. It takes practice, and you should be extremely careful until you become comfortable operating the machine. It will take time to get the feel of the controls, steering, and speed. Go for it. All right, let's move on to the next one. Um, go to the zero turn one. Zero turn again, we're talking about just it being able to be able to turn. Um, the Z500 is a versatile, agile mower designed to handle big mowing jobs quickly and efficiently while providing a comfortable experience for the operator. As you will see, the Z500 zero turn mower. The Z500 back up here just a second here. agile mower designed to handle Right, so we talk about stripes, we talk about mowing, right? And this is this is a good, this is a big, large, large turf area, large field area. This is this is ideal for a ride on mower, right? I mean, you know, walking that whole distance, that's that's a lot of physical work. Um, so you know, you you have to think about that when you're managing a property this size, managing your crew, um, keeping your crew employed, interested, that that type of thing, you know. But don't want to keep 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 this view in mind, right? So I mean, you know. When, when we're mowing stripes, you know, there's a long, long run here, right? If, you, if things are zigzagging, it's going to look kind of funny. So, you know, you pick out something in the distance, and then you mow, you mow straight towards it. You're, you're focused on that, trying to keep everything straight, um, think, trying to get that straight line, right? So, you know, this is a good, a good visual of, of, of trying to do a nice straight, straight line cut. Um, you know, picking something out in the distance. This is this is what would um, it would look really nice, being nice and striped up. Um, you can change directions. This looks like a good field where you could change directions each week and really kind of get a checkerboard pattern in it. So you know, this is just a nice little picture to talk about a couple of those things. <clears throat> that's capable of a 360 degree turn within its own footprint. But like all mowers, the Z500 is a powerful piece of equipment that should be used safely in accordance with the instructions contained in the owner's manual. If used incorrectly, serious injury can potentially occur to you and others. This module will help you learn how to operate and maintain the mower properly and safely. While this training session will provide a good overview should read the owner's manual before operating the mower. If you have questions, be sure to ask your supervisor and don't take risks. If you're not sure about something, so we'll go ask, through, <clears throat> we'll let him go through the different components of, of the of the ride on. Very the similar to each ride on as well. <clears throat> Tracking controls, fuel tanks, fuel gauges for a fuel tank, fuel tank caps, fuel tank selector, fuel shutoff valve, chump control. So fuel tanks and fuel tank selector. So, you know, some mowers will have multiple fuel tanks that'll be on both sides of the mower. Um, and if they're not feeding the engine at the same time, you have to turn them on and off, kind of like that propane, a little easier when you're looking at two specific tanks, right? Um, <clears throat> but some lawnmowers will have two fuel tanks on each side of the mower, and then there will be a fuel uh, separator that is pulling the fuel from whichever tank. So kind of mower specific on that, but, but something to, something to be aware of as well. Fuses, ignition switch, which starts the engine, throttle control, which controls engine speed, blade switch, seat adjustment lever, deck lift pedal, deck release pedal, rollover protection system, or box bar. Seat belt, 
Make sure you read the owner's manual to learn more about these and other parts of the Z500, as well as operating techniques, maintenance, and safety. So yeah, we'll skip through the... ...that are on potential find the mower some time to cool them as the mower works and heats up. Go through this and then maybe see what else is on here. Before you start the mower up, take a look around and make sure there are no stones or other bits of debris in the area that can be picked up and thrown by the mower blades. Also, watch out for bystanders or vehicles that may be in the area. As a general precaution, the blade switch must be pressed down into the disengaged position before you start the engine. The two steering and parking brake controls must be in the lock or outer position. You should adjust the seat to your preferred position before you start the mower. Those are pretty standard on every mower too. Okay, it's not going to start if um, if the PTO is on the blade. The blades are engaged. It's not going to start. It's for whatever reason it got shut off prior to you turning that off. It's not gonna start with those on. And then that is kind of your neutral, those um, steering bars, steering guides, that's kind of your neutral. If they're engaged, it's not gonna start. It's a safety mechanism. It needs to be in neutral um, in, order to, in order to start. To start the Z500, sit on the seat, raise the mower deck to the transport position by pushing the lift pedal forward. Disengage the mower blades by pressing the blade switch down. Move the twin steering sticks to the locked or outer position to activate the parking brake. Move the throttle control to the middle position. If the engine is cold, pull the choke control up. Set the fuel tank valve to the desired tank. Set the deck height pin in the desired position. Press in and turn the ignition key to the start position. When the engine starts, immediately release the ignition key back to the run position. If you open the choke to start the engine, slowly push the choke control knob in. Now let the engine run at a moderate speed, somewhere around middle throttle, for a short time. When mowing, use the full throttle position with no choke. Running a full throttle tends to deliver the best cut, and it is easier on the engine because the engine fan will run at the optimal speed. To shut off the engine, come to a complete stop, and then disengage the blade by pushing in the blade switch. If the mower has been running for a while, let it idle for a short time so it can come down to a normal operating temperature. With the blades disengaged, push the steering and parking brake controls outward into the locked position. Then raise the mower deck and move the throttle to the minimum position. Finally, turn the ignition key to the stop position. You should remove the key when you shut the mower off to avoid theft or unauthorized use. Okay, so those are pretty standard on all on all of them, right? I mean, they're all going to have they're all going to have some steering mechanism. <clears throat> they're all going to have a transport um, deck height, right? They're all going to have the blade engaged. Uh, some are some will have a different type of engine. They may or may not have a choking mechanism. It may be within the um, starter itself, uh, diesel mowers, you know, whatever the case is. But, you know, this is very, very similar to um, many different types of mowers across many different types of brands, uh, just trying to get you used to, to seeing those and, and whatnot. We'll see what the operation Steering control back to the neutral position. 
You can perform a zero turn by pulling one control or the other back behind the neutral position while keeping the other lever pushed forward to perform. And forward. Gently pull the left steering control back to the neutral position. You can perform a So see, see how he's doing that, that zero turn? See how tight of a circle that is? You know, you can see that that, that, that wheel is, is, is turning in that same spot, right? So, you know, the tighter you make that turn is kind of what I was talking about. You're going you're gonna to dig that little circle into that grass every time. Okay, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, so we're going we're gonna to stop with that one there. Um, like I say, the rest of that video is on the, um, on the slide. I think we're going to skip our motivation this, this week. Hopefully you guys click on that and watch it yourself. Matthew McConaughey, another um, uh, commencement speech. Pretty good. I enjoyed it. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoy that a little bit as well. Um, kind of give you a different idea of, you know, speaking um, styles, you know, um, you know, the first one was, was the Admiral, obviously the Admiral and the, you know, any sort of Army, Navy, whatever the case is, they're going to be dressed um, in their uniform. Uh, Matthew McConaughey, a little more um, casual, um, sitting on a stool type thing, um, but very good message, uh, very well dictated. Um, just kind of look at that, look at that process as well, right? So what I want to do is go over these. These are in your, um, these are in Moodle as well, okay? So this is the grading rubric for the equipment test. So this will be the final, this will be the last test in the last lab, right? So what I talked about this past week, um, what I talked about is um, picking two pieces of equipment, <clears throat> since we should know how to use them all. Uh, not necessarily gonna tell you, maybe I will later on, not sure yet, um, but we're gonna go through a couple of things, but these are the grading rubrics. Um, so one thing that I'm gonna do during this test is we're gonna grade each other. Um, or you guys are going to grade each other. Um, so well, that's what we do as managers. That's what we do as supervisors. That's what we do as business owners, right? We evaluate other people. So we're going to do that in the class for that aspect. And, you know, there's a, th this is the rubric that we're going to go off of. Um, you know, where you, do you have the safety components down, right? Did you put on the proper PPE? Did you discuss it? Um, safe handling. Safe handling in general is just, <clears throat> you know, did you drive it like a crazy man? Um, because you think that you know what you're doing. Um, are you being precautious? Is there, is there people around? Is there um, uh, hazards around? All those types of things. Did you do the proper, pro proper operation, right? Did you, did you start it up right? Did you do a pre, a pre check? Did you do all those, did you do all those types of things? And then professionalism. Professionalism is what we do day in, day out. That's what you'll do day in, day out when you have um, a full-time job and make a career out of this. Uh, professionalism is what separates you from the next guy. So we go on to make sure that we hold each other accountable for that and that's something that you get used to doing, okay? So this, was the, this is the one for the final. This is your presentation aspect, okay? This is what is going to be graded from your presentation. I'll do those. I'll do that evaluation. Uh, once again, goes back to safety. <clears throat> points earned, points deducted. Why? Did you go over all the safety aspects? Did you know the subject, right? One thing that we talked about with the last motivational uh, speech last week was, is, you know, you, you know, know your material, right? Do you know your material that you're talking about? Um, you know, know the subject. Study it. Just pay attention to what you're, what you're doing. Um, did you write it down and are you specifically reading it? And you didn't, you didn't study it. You didn't know it. You didn't, whatever. Having notes and paying attention to make sure you didn't miss things is one thing. Um, reading word for word, um, you know, that's not, that's not the best presentation style, right? So do you, did you know the subject? Proper operation, did you do it right? Did you, did you show us properly? Did you do, uh, 
Um, did you do pre-inspections? Did you, once again, did you drive it like crazy man or did you, did you, did you do everything on that aspect? And then once again, professionalism, it's, it's all about professionalism um, throughout your life, throughout my life, um, separating one guy from the next. <clears throat> so, you know, is a grading rubrics. Those are on mute Moodle. Um, please look at them. Please understand them. Please know them. Um, and I'll discuss those again. Our discussion question for the week. Okay, so we did um, we did our discussion question last week. Give you hundred grand. Said what kind of business are you going to come up with? Um, and then I said I would kind of develop another discussion question, see how it goes throughout the semester on what our answers were. So a lot of us purchased equipment, purchased trucks, um, did that type of thing. One thing that I, that I noticed, no fault, no issues, but something to discuss, right? Um, you know, nobody purchased more than one vehicle. So if you only purchase one vehicle, doesn't matter how many people you have or how many crews you have, but how, how are you gonna sell the next job when you have one vehicle? Um, so if it's you that's working and you have a helper, that's fine, right? How productive is your helper gonna be if you're going to sell the next job if he doesn't have a vehicle? Um, maybe, maybe fine, just explain it, let's discuss it. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you have multiple crews, if your idea is to have multiple crews, multiple lawnmowers out, um, they need more than one truck, right? You know, if you're always on the job, how are you selling other jobs? Um, you know, there is nighttime, there are weekends. I don't disagree with that. Just let's discuss it. Let's talk about it. Let's, let's see. Um, are you going to show up to your job with a dirty work truck that you just finished off with a job? Let's just say you, you, you scheduled a job at seven o'clock at night because that's when the homeowner, that's when the customer wanted to meet. That's fine, no problem, right? But did you just finish up a job prior to at 6.30? It's all loaded down because you cleaned it up and that's what you're gonna show up to your next job with. No harm, no foul. If you do, let's just discuss it. Let's talk about it. So that's the next one. Um, see some responses on that and kind of go from there. Um, other than that, I hope you guys have a good week. And we'll see you in um, we'll see you in class on Monday.